Now then, folks, this is a bit of a random one. Um, my main sh filming area is a bit of a mess at the moment, so I thought I would take the opportunity to have a look at something that I found, as you do, in the garage, which I've completely forgotten about. A um, bit of backstory. Many, many moons ago, and I'm talking like 20 years ago, um, the channel started off with me doing little cut down versions of videotapes of cartoons from the 80s like Thundercats. Um, so I would use some equipment to do a video capture from a video cassette recorder to put it onto my PC to then edit down and upload onto a very early form of YouTube. Um, now, sadly, a lot of those videos have now gone off the channel so I could monetize it, but um, some of some of these sort of the, the mixed together versions of them do still exist. But what I'd forgotten was that um, once upon a time, I was going to take the, some of the videos, I think just to a charity shop or something, and then my car got stolen. And my car got stolen, would you believe it, with those videos in the car. So they all disappeared before I could get a chance to change my mind. But to my surprise, when I was looking at my garage, having moved house nearly four years ago now, this was still there. And these are basically the survivors of those tapes and the equipment that I used to capture the intros and Starfleet back in the day. So let me just run you through this for the sake of uh, posterity, if nothing else, I guess. Now, this, I don't know what you'd use these days, probably sort of a capture card or something similar. But as you can see, there's a whole pile of wires and st stuff attached to this thing. Um, and a very, very subtle power brick. That's actually for something else. Um, it's just entwined here. And I'll, I'll show you the something else in a moment. But basically, this was a Canopus ADVC, if I remember rightly, and, and, and an analog to digital video converter, ADVC. Um, so you can see it there, Canopus. I hope you can see it. I'm shooting rather blind here. Now, the quirky thing about this, so it's got power in, a video um, in there as well, which as you can see is about as, as analog as it gets. Um, although even that's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, that's just a sort of a VF in, I think. But the interesting thing is this socket here, this socket was for Firewire. Now, those of you of a certain age may or may not remember what, actually, actually, no, hang on, I could be wrong. Is that, no, actually that's DV input output there. No, I could be wrong actually. Is that Firewire? Yeah, I think it is, but it's just the it's just on the other side. So this little connector here is Firewire. And I don't know, I suppose it was kind of like a, an early form of USB-C, I guess. Um, you know, it's kind of a, it was supposed to be a high velocity data transfer cable. Um, before they were really a thing and without it actually using a, a LAN connection or anything like that. But I don't think it lasted many years at all, if I remember rightly. Um, so for some reason, I think I must have got myself a Firewire card for the PC for this to connect to, for me to be able to then sort of pull down the video stream at the sort of speed it needs to be pulled down, basically. So as I say, you know, the whole thing was very niche. It's very, very niche. Um, now this is all horribly tangled up because it's, I say, it's just been sort of sat there for, for donkey's ears. But you can see all the sort of analog goodness going on there, cables wise. But there was another component to this that I needed. And in fact, this was my, maybe one of my early eBay forays actually, because there was, um, ooh, good old scar. Look at that. Marvelous. Lovely. Um, there was another element to this, which was a difficulty for me living in the United Kingdom. These Starfleet tapes that I was using as the source material, which are probably now, and actually it looks, actually that looks, 
don't know if you can see that, but that looks surprisingly shiny, actually. Um, but they were the only way that I could get a full suite of Starfleet footage at that point in time with my resources. So um, this may even be the entire series. These may be ones I held on to as my my best examples of the source material that I had. It's quite possible. And they all look, they're surprisingly good. They haven't been water damaged from the looks of it. So we've got volume seven there. Volume one, in fact, that's a sealed volume one. Um, <laughs> and another rogue element, Star Wars droids. Look at that. That's the Star Wars droids cartoon on VHS in a very battered original cardboard packaging. Because that was probably, that was that would have been secondhand used when I got it. Um, Yox and droids videotapes with Dairy Lee. Special Dairy Lee price, $7.99, including postage and dispatch. CBS Fox Video, universal suitable for all. Yes, so there you are. A little piece of history lurking in my garage, unbeknownst to me. Thundercats Exodus. Thundercats Burbills and Mandora the Evil Chaser. I seem to remember that episode. It was quite cool. Um, <laughs> probably why I got it. Um, okay. Walt Disney's masterpiece Fantasia. Don't know if that's still sealed or not. I doubt it. Ooh. Mm, it's not still sealed, but it's still got bits in it. Looks all right. Fantasia there. Little bit of Disney history. Okay. Nice. Good sturdy plastic clamshell case there. Uh, random paperage. Starfleet Volume 4, The Search for the Skull. Unusually in a plastic case, but someone's clearly just cut the, the, the frontage off one of the... Uh, the, the normal sort of cardboard wrapped ones. So this was the other part of the puzzle here. Um, yet, yet more cables I have no justifiable use case for, but you'll see that that, well, you might be able to see, that is a two pronged power cord. And there's a reason for that because all of these tapes are NTSC. NTSC videotapes, as against PAL, which we use in the UK, are a different frame rate and a different resolution. So a PAL video cassette recorder will not play US videotapes. For that, you need an NTSC video recorder. So of course, being a smart ass, I went on eBay and found myself an NTSC video recorder available in the UK, as you do. And this is it. I have no idea if this would still work but this is a symphonic, is it a symphonic model BL24RC? It smells like it's had better days. It's been right at the bottom of the box. Four head, 19 micron head apparently, VHS HQ, and somewhere it'll probably mention that it's an NTSC. Although if it was only on, on sale in the US, obviously it is inherently only NTSC. But that is what allowed me to get an output that I could feed into the Canopus and then mess with to generate video CDs at a very poor quality of Starfleet so that I had a digital source I could then use to do screenshots and build websites, various captures, because that was literally all I had to go on from back in the day. And it took my PC of the day forever to do that. It wasn't even that many hours worth of footage, but it took it a long time to do it. Um, that is about it in there. There's nothing else of any interest whatsoever in there, apart from lots of dead bugs. <laughs> so um, that was what led to me to be able to do a lot of the um, content on my Starfleet Expo on my website um, in the early days before we finally got a fully digital version of the show on DVD, which I helped put together in the UK. Um, now, there were laser discs as well. So if any of you are shouting at me that there were laser discs, yes, you're absolutely right, there were laser discs as well. I didn't have a laser disc player and I certainly couldn't afford to bring in laser discs from abroad. So that is how I DIY'd it back in the day. Um, many other people will have done it much better since then, of course. And we know, I think there are now some Blu-ray versions of Starfleet out there in various different languages and, and so on. But um, the 
the US version was basically the UK version, but it was edited together in such a way that three episodes formed one of these tapes. So multiply that up, you get 24 episodes, but they lost the, the intro and outro sequences for all but the first and last of those three episodes on each tape. So we lost a little bit of footage doing that, but it did give you all the raw footage of the episodes, which was, which was of use. So um, yeah, it's like random one this evening. So uh, apologies for the randomness, but I am trying to catch up. I've just been bouncing all around the country this weekend. So I haven't had much time to really sort of sit and sort myself out. And um, it's the, uh, the, the closing hours of Sunday. So I better get this edited and up for you. Otherwise there'll be nothing to watch on Monday night. So uh, with a bit of luck, I'll get something up for Thursday as well. But cheers for now.